Huh. This guy either do a lot or very little. Let's take a look. What's up guys, I'm Hansel and here we are to do a breakdown slash a live reaction and review and analysis of Eternal Flames. What if Choso helped Yuji fight Mahito? Quite a question indeed, quite a question indeed. This is interesting. This is something that never necessarily came to mind for me as like a thing that could possibly even happen just because of like everything that kind of needs to happen for this to happen and how many things in Shibuya kind of can't happen and the problems and ramifications of this but there is a almost infinite amount of things to talk about that could come from this rather seemingly enough innocuous scenario because of the nature of Shibuya so let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it editing me three two one go What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And here's one fact. I will be yapping quite extensively, dare I say. Fun fact, I do like to yap. This video is 17 minutes and 9 seconds long. I can promise you we're going to be here for longer than that. I promise you that. So, please, regardless of whether or not you want to hear me yap or not, make sure you check out the link to Eternal Flames channel, which will link in... English, which will be linked in the description down below, along with the link to the original video. Fantastic JJK content creator. May or may not be seeing a collab or two dropping sometime soon. I'm not going to say anything too definitive, but something may have transpired. Something may have gone down. So check out Eternal Flame, and you know we gotta have some gas. But with that being the case, let me like the video real quick right now. Get that bad boy up. But let's cover what I think would happen if Choso helped Yuji fight Mahito. This depends on when it happens and how it happens. If the Choso fight still goes as normal, aka Choso beats the brakes off of Itadori in a really high intense, like super high difficulty fight, and then Choso has his freaking geek, then Shibuya mostly proceeds as normal. And then you get to obviously Yuji waking up and well, not necessarily waking up, being allowed back in control of the body after he wakes up inside of Sukuna, and then Sukuna giving him back control, then the whole Yuji thing, and, you know, bada-bing, bada-boom. But then that also depends on where do you insert Choso after this. Does Choso immediately appear and come hang out with Yuji and then, like, try to console him after the whole Shibuya incident? You know, the level of tried? Like, does that happen? Or does he show up after Nobara has shown up and been used for character development. Because hypothetically, if you insert him right at the start, you save Nobara, because Mahito's not going to get away from Choso and Itadori if they're both fighting him at the same time. And obviously, if Itadori still lands that Black Flash, and, you know, Nobara still ends up paralyzing Mahito for a second, it could go absolutely devious, absolutely diabolical, absolutely crazy. Choso's not letting Mahito escape. Mahito never gets Nobara. Then we get a triple jumping of Mahito, Nobara, well, not Mahito, Itadori, Choso, and Nobara all against one Mahito. And as powerful as Mahito is, without domain expansion being on the table and without him hitting the Black Flash to understand how to do a certain point two second domain, I think he generally just loses. He gets the brakes beaten off of him. But then Kenjaku shows up earlier and saves Mahito earlier, and Mahito's not as powerful. But it doesn't necessarily matter, considering the technique gets stripped away anyway. And it feels like Kenjaku doesn't really need Mahito to be that much more powerful, since he wasn't going to use him anyway. But if Choso shows up post-character development, then basically nothing changes? Like... No, Bar would still fall. Maybe, here's the thing, if he shows up after Toto shows up, then maybe Toto's still an active part in the narrative. Because once again, with Choso support and the way blood manipulation works, he would allow for a lot of crazy support. Like, especially in combination with Boogie Wookie, him just setting up like a whole cluster of blood is essentially allowing Choso to switch anywhere and everywhere with Toto switching everybody everywhere and anywhere and Mahito would basically never be able to lean or land anything so it could still get devious and then if Choso's still around that could have ramifications later but the skill ramifications are questionable because unfortunately grade ones kind of get power crap you'd have to introduce him into a lower power colony but then again I'm not sure how good he would do there he'd be useful later on in the battle against Tsukuna with the ability of Boogie Woogie so hypothetically no matter where you insert Choso, I think the story does just get better. Like, whether it be the earliest possible point. Well, actually, no, here's the thing. It could get worse, depending. Because if you insert him as early as possible, let's say the Choso and Itadori fight does not happen at all. It simply doesn't transpire. Due to one reason or another, Itadori, upon seeing Choso, Choso gets the feeling immediately, recognizes Yuji as his brother, and then they don't throw hands. Then, Chogo never ends up 
finding Yuji as easily because he only found Yuji because the girls found Yuji after the Choso fight and then fed him the finger and then released the finger to feed Yuji, which gave Choso a direct pinpoint on Yuji's location by proxy. And also, Yuji wouldn't be able to fight back <laughs> against Jogo if Jogo found the fingers, but it's also very likely that Jogo wouldn't force Sukuna out. Even with the ten fingers consumed, if Itadori's in a fine physical state, and a fine mental state, because Choso wouldn't have broken him down at all, and there'd be no reason for character development, then it's very likely that Sukuna doesn't come out. And then Megumi, Megumi perishes. That's the bad thing. Megami Perry, but ironically enough, in the long term, spoilers for the JJK manga, shock horror, I'm not going to pencil you, spoilers for the JJK manga, but hypothetically, in the super long term, that actually may be a good thing that Megami Perish is there. Because then the Yorozu plotline doesn't happen. Sugan is switching vessels doesn't happen. Everything, like Sugan's whole plan falls through, essentially. Joko may off Yuji? Because that's the thing, Jogo only perishes to Sukuna in Shibuya at that point. No one else in Shibuya was beating Jogo. Especially if the Dagon Domain scenario still happens, the only person who could keep with Jogo in speed was Nabito. No one else was beating Jogo. So Jogo kind of, like, solo bolos everybody. But then Kinjaku would likely step in and absorb Jogo. So I think Yuji still ends up being saved. Megami just gets got, which is bad for Sugana later on. So ironically enough, yeah, I think despite the loss of Megami and possibly still Nobara in the timeline, depending on who Jogo runs into, I... I think overall, no matter what, if Choso helps, the timeline just gets better. Because we don't have Sugan later on, at least not in a way, because Megami gets got in the earliest scenario. We do have Toto later on to help in the Shibuya, not the uh, Shibuya, the Shinjuku showdown. Or we have Nobara still around to also help in the Shinjuku showdown with all the Sukuno body parts lying around to use resonance. So, like, I don't know. I can't... I know this is, is innately a more positive scenario, but I can't really see this being a bad one. This is crazy. And here's the thing, right? There's a big question, especially based on what was recently discussed, on whether or not Choso could actually harm Mahito. Personally, I think he can. Because the way Mahito describes the conditions of Yuji's ability to attack him isn't any conscious acknowledgement of the soul, or the outline of the soul, or anything like that. Now, now all Mahito says is, oh, you contain a second soul within you. ruh -roh. So even though Choso can't sense that second soul, he contains and suppresses that second soul. So like... I think he can harm Mahito. And even if he can't, Choso just facilitating for Yuji to harm Mahito is still more than enough. Look at Toto. Toto didn't harm Mahito. Didn't matter because the facilitation was more than enough. But <laughs> enough of my endless yapping. Let's actually let Eternal Flame cook a little bit. I'm sorry. Let's see. Hello, everybody. I'm Eternal Flame. And since we've finally gone to that point in the anime, where we've gone to the point in the anime where Choso decides to swap sides in order to help Yuji Itadori, his own little brother, instead of going on the bad guy's side anymore. However, in this timeline, I would like to explore the possibility of if Choso was able to get himself together even further faster than he originally did after the Yuji battle. In this timeline, I would like to explore the possibility of what if Choso showed up to help against Mahito in that fight and see how that would change the timeline. I'm Eternal Flame. Okay, so we're comp we're kicking out that first. I may do that though. I the, the, right? Thank you, Flay. I now have an, I have an idea for one of my own. And that can be like a more plot-based what if. The reason why you don't see me do what ifs as often as I realistically should and I more so do reactions to other what ifs when I write what ifs, oh gosh darn it, I write what if like, let me see. How how many words? It's not even complete yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a haunting view. It's not even complete. Neither of my main ones that I'm working on right now are. But what if Midori was confident? How many words are you? Where's the info? You and like the imprint layout, suggest changes, document, word count. What if Midori is confident? which is completed up to the point of Kamina Ward. So, aka, the back half of the series is already 28,160 words. That's why it takes forever for me to do what ifs, because I, I go super in-depth and super crazy with them, and I try to script them out properly. I don't while out. So that's, so that's the that's the unfortunate thing with what ifs. And I, what if Elizabeth betrayed the Goddess Clan? <laughs> How long is that one? 22,680 words. That one's also incomplete, but it only has, like, two more parts that need to be read. And, like, that one, that one I'm just pro procrastinating on. I already know how it's supposed to go. I just need to script it out. So, like, yeah, my what-ifs, they, they take a hot minute. So, that's why the what-ifs aren't too common. But a little plot-based one like this, Joso just getting the revelation earlier that Yuji is his, not best friend, but little friend, that, the door.
is open. <laughs> I'm talking about so like it could go crazy. It could get devious. It could reach a new level. I can see a vision there. A vision has been open. Thank you, Eternal Flame. But let's see. And let's get straight into the video. How before we even start the video, be sure to like, subscribe, book anime content like this. We've got a lot more on the channel, I've and liked, let's do this. I've sub now, I've, I've decided the point we're going to have Choso show up is right when Toto and Nita show up as well. Where Yuji is getting broken and really heavily beaten up, Choso is going to show up right around the same time that Toto shows up. How before? That's another. Is okay, so we're going we're going late, late, late into the time. Okay. Hmm. I think the the most we get out of this timeline. I don't know. We'll see how he does it. The most we get out of this timeline is Toto being alive, because obviously Nobara's not making it still, and we may get an earlier big Jaku interference. Those are the, those are the two main things I'm predicting from this timeline in particular, because it's so late into the timeline. But based on what he did, like this is co coincided with the anime's release, it makes sense that he's doing it this way. I see the vision, but I think that's it because you can't really get too much out else out by setting it this late in the timeline because too many characters have already fallen but saving toto is a big thing like don't get me wrong toto definitely gets cliffed hard 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 clip like he gets very very hard clipped. it's why you don't see him it's why we have never heard from we no one has mentioned toto in literally 150 chapters maybe more Maybe not more than 150, no, 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 because we're at the 250s, so, like, not not more than 150, but, like, it's been a bare minimum 100 chapters since anyone's even mentioned Toto. So, like, him still being around? Boogie Woogie versus in the Shinjuku showdown? It could go crazy, it could go crazy, don't sleep, don't sleep, but let's see. We can even get into the story, there are a few questions I need to cover, which are two in particular. How strong is Choso, and is Choso able to hurt Maito's soul? Now, I'll cover if... Okay, so how strong is Choso? We can do this nice, simple, clean, and buttery. Choso should, at bare minimum, be equal to Shibuya Yuji. Like, like just stat-wise, bar for bar, band for band, they both have the ability to harm each other. Yuji's hits are harder hitting, though, and Choso's defense is lower than Yuji, but they have relative combat speed of Choso not being slightly superior, so i definitely just put them flat out at equals. Obviously, once Yuji starts to level up more, once he starts hitting Black Flashes, once he gets more experience, once he actually heals up from the Choso fight, ironically enough, then he gets a lot stronger to the point where right after the Shibuya incident, Choso's like, whoa, bro's looking a little bit... Baby bro's looking a little bit different. He's a he's a demon god. So obviously, I don't think Joso scales to the later iterations of Yuji. But I think even scaling to Mitsubuya Yuji there, that's good. That's real. Good. That's that's some juicy stuff right there. That's some quality quality good scaling that makes him an undeniable asset in the Maito fight. And I kind of covered this earlier, but yeah, I do think Choso can harm Maito's soul. I know a lot of people won't like that, and I don't blame them, because, you know, it is kind of weird. And it is debatable. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sure what Flame is going to say. It is definitely debatable with that new chapter coming out, and Choso meaning he can't sense the other soul. But just based on how Mahito describes the criteria for harming him, it's a completely subconscious process for Yuji up until recently in the manga, where he actively started to, like, look for the outline of souls, in the same way that Maki and Toji can see the outline of souls. So, like, Yuji ended up developing a Heavenly Restriction perk based on a subconscious understanding of it. Choso would have a subconscious understanding of it because he is a two-soul being. It's just that the other soul, unlike Sukuna, does not have any pressure. So I do think he could harm Mahito. However, one thing that I do think is important, I don't think that means Choso is immune. It's the same thing with all the heavenly, not the heavenly restricted users. It's the same thing with all the incarnated sorcerers when talking about them versus Mahito, particularly in a matchup. While I do think they can harm Mahito, they, unlike Yuji, are not immune. Remember, Yuji is very specifically immune, not just because he's a two-soul being, but because he's tied specifically to Sukuna. A character long since implied you have one of the strongest souls in the entire series. If not flat out the strongest soul in the entire series. And thusly his soul rejection works perfectly on Mahito. I don't think any of the reincarnated sorcerers and by proxy Choso have this. But they do have the ability to harm him. And with Yuji also being able to harm him in this scenario. Toto being able to provide facilitation and support. And Choso's high level of strength already. I don't see Mahito one tapping him. Or the domain really getting him. At least not anything too lethal. I can see Choso also just chopping off a limb and keeping it pushing. And even then... Ooh, you may... You may ugh, that may be bad, though. Because, like, one limb Choso... Because, yeah, he wouldn't even have civil domain to defend it. So, like, he may actually get himself jacked up in that domain expansion. <laughs> that may be bad, but let's see. 
Choso was able to hurt Maito's soul first, and then I will cover how strong is Choso after. Choso is very much able to hurt Maito's soul, by the way. Choso is able to hurt Maito's soul for the same reason Yuji is able to hurt Maito's soul. Because this is something that I and a lot of people forget about, I think. Which is the simple fact that Choso is possessing another body. And that is how he ended up coming back to life. Thus, he has two souls inside of his body and he is be aware of the soul. So to answer the question, Choso has something that most people don't often have as an advantage that they have against. He has two souls inside of his body and he is be aware of the soul. So to answer the question, Choso has some- I went wrong. But this is the big thing. This is the big thing right here. This is the opening criteria. And it's why I'm personally in the camp that all reincarnated sorcerers can harm Mahito. From your Reggies to your Ryus, they all can. Look what Maito says here. Yuji Itadori is a vessel. Another soul dwells within his body, so he naturally has learned to perceive the contours of the soul. It is something he naturally did just by being a two-fold being. Yuji had no idea what he was doing, but he was able to harm Mahito. So, just like Itadori does, Choso, by being a dual-soul being, accidentally knows how to do it. Would he be as proficient at it as Yuji is currently in the manga? No, but neither was Yuji. He had to train for that. But I do think all of Choso's attacks would do damage. Especially Choso's attacks in particular, because they're all still him. They're all still blood-based. Notably, there are some questions on whether or not something like Ryu's Granite Blast would work. Are they technically imbued with his soul strikes? Maybe? Kinda? I don't know. Uro, Sky Manipulation. That's spatial manipulation. Would that work on Mahito? I don't know. Maybe. I'm still in the camp they both slam him. But regardless, maybe not. But someone like Choso, who all of his attacks are based around his own blood and whatever he's not using in terms of projectiles for his blood is physical fighting, physical hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he'd do numbers. <laughs> he'd do crazy numbers to Mahito because everything would be imbued with the soul. There's not a single thing that wouldn't be making him an extremely bad matchup for Mahito because there's no wiggle room. Where, like, with other reincarnated sorcerers, you can argue Wiggle Room based on the way their technique works and, like, how much of the soul is really fed into the things like Cursed Energy Expenditure for Ryu and, like, Spatial Manipulation for Uro. You can kind of get weird and semantic-y. You can't really do that for Choso. Choso just throws hands with Mahito. And they hurt. It's unfortunate. But let's see. Something that most people don't often have as an advantage that they'd have against Mahito, which is that he is able to directly hurt Mahito's soul because he is a vessel, as well as the method also being directly compared to how Sakuna functions. We know for a fact that Choso is able to most definitely hurt Mahito's soul. So he is able to hurt Mahito's soul, that's good and dandy, but how strong is Choso really? Well, Choso is very, very strong. With flowing blood red scale stack, he is able to spar in direct hand to hand combat with purpose realized Yuji, who Yuji, before he even realized his purpose, was able to strike as hard as Nanami does. And then he gets even stronger after he realizes his purpose, and Choso is still able to spar with that Yuji and go hand to hand bar for bar with that Yuji. Now, without flowing blood scale stack, Yuji is able to do critical amounts of damage to him in three hits, it does really heavy damage, however he still does have flowing red scale stack in order to do hand to hand matchups. However, hand to hand is not really where Choso excels. Where Choso actually excels is ranged and he has- That is one thing you could definitely hypothetically give someone like Mahito and Ejin. In terms of his attack potency, he should at bare minimum scale to a purpose realized Yuji and a mentally shattered Yuji, obviously. His attacks are able to do damage. So like, if you assume that Mahito and Yuji have similar levels of AP, then a lot of Mahito's attacks would be doing big damage. But to be fair, I think it's not insane to say that Choso and Toto have comparable amounts of durability. I, I don't think saying that the special grade cursed object incarnated into human flesh and the grade one sorcerer having comparable durability stats is too crazy. So I think Toto, who's able to take some hits from Mahito, Choso should be able to do the same. And I don't think, I don't really think that Mahito is as strong as Yuji. I think he's able to harm him, but I don't think he's as strong in particular. As he even admits, like, hey, you know, I'm able to do damage to you, but, like, I really need to put my back into these bad boys. I need to catch you off guard. I need to do things that are a little bit bamboozling to really do numbers to you. So, it's really debatable on the durability front. But, yeah, that is a hypothetical part of this battle. If Maito lands too many hits on Choso, and Choso's not able to guard and respond in time, or if he's not in flowing red scale stack, then, yeah. Some, some serious numbers could be done by Maito. And, once again, he's not immune to soul manipulation. 
He isn't. He's not like Yuji. He does not have Sukuna inside him. He still could be an Idol Transfiguration victim, if that touch gets landed enough times. Because I don't think, once again, Choso's powerful enough that I don't think the one-shot mechanic would kick in. If Nanami can resist it, Choso can resist it. But let's see. A lot of good range capabilities. For example, he has Slicing Exorcism, which is able to create several small threads of blood that are able to cut through things like razors, which is going to be extremely useful for getting rid of several of Maito's transfigured humans, which are only around the grade 2 to grade 3 level, as directly stated by Toto. So that's going to be extremely useful for dealing with large clusters of people, especially as shown in the Gojo vs. Disaster Curses fight, because that was how it was mainly being used in order to help distract Gojo's mind even further. On top of that, Choso also has access to the ability to cover his body or specific parts of his body in blood to heavily increase the durability of his body even further, with Yuji directly comparing Maito's distorted killing form to that shield and nothing else. Of course, this does have a... That is a big thing I didn't think about. I like that Flame brought that up. The idea that Choso's profinity for long range to mid range actually kind of covers everything. Because you have Toto as the facilitator, Yuji as the close range, and Choso as the mid range to long range. Mahito has no way to escape. <laughs> like, in this case in particular, every single angle is covered. Where Mahito, you can never make an argument that Mahito is a perfect, like, keep away fighter. Sort of like. It's a good comparison, kind of like, arguably like a Samus for my Smash Bros. players out there, or possibly like an, a Z Broly for my Fighters players out there. And let me see, can I get in one more? Can I get in one more? Kind of in, I don't want to say Axel Low for my Guilty Gear players, but kind of, kind of sort of, no, not as extreme as Axel Low though. But like essentially Mahito's good at keep away, and it's something that Toto and Yuji were somewhat struggling with in their battle with Choso there. And with the potency of Choso's attacks, and the lack of potency behind a lot of Mahito's transfigured humans in terms of their durability, yeah, Choso completely covers that angle of the fight. And then Mahito's range shrinks massively, because he then has to deal with them head-on, and now two of them can harm him. And once again, all that cursed energy that's going to be flying around in those blood particles is just fuel to be swapped with for Toto. Who's going to be such a cra- Like, the facilitation that Toto's going to be able to get up to in this fight will be insane. It'll be next level. But no, please. Massive risk on Choso's body to begin with. However, this can be used in a pinch if absolutely needed. Now, I'm also not saying that distorted film of killing Monito is less durable than that. He is not. But it's very important because this durability exceeds that of Hanami's considering this is the main comparison that is drawn to and us previously knowing that Yuji's hits are not able to reach this in comparison to Yuji in Goodwill who is able to hit Hanami to begin with. Choso also has access to the Piercing Blood, which the Piercing Blood is something Yuji has to straight up aim dodge in order to actually move out the way of. It is that fast of an attack that he has to slide under it. Of course, it's only talking about the initial beam being fired and not actually when Choso changes its direction around. However, it's still fast enough to do that and it does so much damage to Yuji's arm, it nearly breaks. It's absolutely insane of an attack. He's also able to make his blood be launched out like little sickles as well and do it in quite abundance as well and then pull that blood back towards him and just do it again. But most of all, he's able to use the supernova attack, which is done by heavily compressing blood into small little orbs or having them explode. Then he can either have around him basically shielding him, he can fire out directly towards people, etc. These are all very useful applications of blood manipulation, especially against someone like Mahito. Most of all, and this is going to be by far and away the most important thing, he can fire out torrents of blood at people in order to keep them away from him, which against someone like Mahito, that's a big thing, too. That's a big thing, too. Notably, well, not just the whole drowning thing. What Choso now has to not worry about with Toto and Yuji being there is defense. He can just fully dive into straight DPS. Because that's one of Toto Choso's biggest weaknesses, as we covered earlier. The idea that uh, his defenses aren't the best. If he's really taking three hits from Yuji while he's not in flowing red scale stack, and those are all doing crazy levels of damage to him, like a, a, just a freshly purpose realized Yuji, like, yeah, that's, that's not too crazy in terms of durability. But with Toto and Yuji there, his durability might as well be zero. He doesn't need it. The defense will be immaculate, and it'll be done for him. So he can legit just spam. 
he can do everything that Flame just said from all the individual types of attacks and tactics and just flood the whole battlefield with him. Not have to worry about any of it. If he's ever in danger, he'll be swapped with one of them or one of Maito's constructions or anything like that, thanks to Toto. And if Maito ever gets too close, usually he'll be right there. Waiting for it, or waiting for it. Or, like, he'll be right there hooking him up. And that's the thing. Maito still can't get close because Choso can arm him too. Maito tries to get close and Choso just... Or... Or... Or, like, or, <laughs> like, many separate blades. Don't want to say. But, like, ch like he could straight up do anything. He Choso essentially has the world as his oyster in this kind of scenario because he does not have to worry about defense. And ironically enough, technically, Toto and Yuji don't either. As long as Toto just keeps... They can get sloppy with it, too. He can just have fun because of how much he'll be able to swap with. If he's able to swap with Cursed, Energy, Imbued Rocks, what do you think he's going to be able to do with Blood Manipulation around the entire battlefield? He'll be cooking. Let's see. It's going to be extremely important, mainly because Maito's main way is one-touching people and then finishing them off. Furthermore, Maito at this current point in time will not be able to one-shot Choso either. So, yeah. Furthermore, and this is something really, really important to note as well, Choso is going to start this battle off with an immense, immense rage buff, so he's going to be even stronger. We know this because Choso is very easy to anger when it comes to his brothers, so Choso watching basically Maito bully his brother and break him to the ground is going to give Choso a massive rage amp. So now that we've gotten the scaling out the way and how strong Choso is and the fact Choso can harm the soul, I'm going to talk about the battle and how the battle massively changes. So the point where Choso arrives in the battlefield is when Mahito is about to go for a slash on Toto, but Toto swaps places with Mahito, and that is when there's going to be something that catches everyone there off guard which is going to be a piercing blood directly hitting Mahito through the arms and launching him back. Now, at first, everyone's going to be extremely confused, especially Mahito, and Mahito is first going to think, okay, there's a pretty good chance that he's just meant to hit Toto, but Toto swapped places with me and I got hit instead. Because Mahito would still believe that Choso is an ally of his, he would be happy that Choso arrived only to be hit with another piercing blood and realize Choso is angry and pissed off at Mahito, shouting for him to stop hurting his brother. As Toto realizes, Choso is likely in a similar effect to him, where he has another brother, another brotherly bond, and Toto is very, very intrigued at this new brother he has, but he'll think about it later, because he knows his brother is the type to make friends like this. So while Toto gives his speech to Yuji to bring him back to the world, Choso begins his battle against Maito. As Maito immediately also notices that Choso is hitting a lot harder than usual, and more importantly, Choso is a that's a big thing too. It's, I didn't even think about that, but at opening up with Maito's initial confusion on like Ch Choso even being there, like, hey dude, what are you doing? <laughs> We're friends, remember? Like, if with him, with Maito being thrown off by that as well, Choso's gonna get some big hits. And like, this is gonna sound crazy. Actually, no, I, I think it is. It's a little bit too crazy because Maito, he's durable. He's durable. Like, his clone gets one shot, but his clone is seemingly enough weaker than him. But with that being the case, I don't think Mahito's gonna be able to maintain. If a piercing blood goes straight through him, it's going straight through him. Like he's getting he's getting skewered on piercing bloods. Especially if he's caught completely off guard, his body isn't reinforced properly, and his soul is taking damage. Boom, big damage. Another one lands, boom, more big damage. And while Mahito's still trying to like get back in the groove, everything Choso does, from piercing bloods to blood sickles to anything that he just throws out at random while rage amped, yeah, all Mahito's curses. Or transfigured humans not doing much. Maito himself probably not doing much. Once again, I don't see him because if Yuji's able to run the ones with Maito, and we just have a Yuji that actually has a technique, what is a weakened Maito going to do against a rage amped Shoso? Come on, now it's not it's not going to be that serious. And then once Shoso hops into the Yuji, yo, it's going to be a massacre. Let's see it for him. A natural predator for Mahito, just like Yuji is, because he is able to hit the soul and realize that Choso is a vessel, a vessel he directly brought back. 
as now a 1v1 would begin, with Maito at least preparing himself to attempt to put the very thing he brought back down, and put him back to the grave where he belonged. As the battle would immediately start out with Maito trying to go in for close quarters combat, he was in a close quarters combat type of mood, and he knew if he could get his palms on Choso, he'd be able to end it so he could focus back on the other two opponents in front of him. Choso had already done some damage and a mark to Mahito, with him being at even less than 40% of his current soul HP because of those two attacks. He knew he would need to damage and touch Choso several times in order to kill him, so he'd need to kill him as quick as possible, and doing Idle Transfiguration would be the best way to do so. However, Choso immediately made several blood spears across the area and just not let Mahito get close to him. An advantage Choso has that most other people don't have is Choso is very, very much aware of what Mahito's technique actually is. So he knows letting Mahito touch him will be incredibly dangerous, so keeping things at a range is best for him. Furthermore, Choso is naturally a ranged fighter, so this is the best possible situation for him. So Choso pretty early on is going to also create another wave of blood, making sure to have several supernovas around him and prepare just in case Monito does try and launch more idle transfigured humans at Choso directly, while keeping up his range repeatedly by having the blood spheres launch at him again and again before turning them back into an orb, in order to get Monito at a further away distance while charging up a piercing blood. Now, it should be noted, Choso is not physically stronger than Monito. If Mahito and Choso were to scrap in a 1v1 in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Mahito would most certainly win, considering Mahito's relativity to a much stronger Yuji in comparison to Choso's relativity and above level to a much weaker Yuji being purpose-realized Yuji in comparison to late Shibuya Yuji. However, Choso has the advantage of he is not so slow that they're going to be speed blitzing him, so he'll be able to... That's the thing, that's the thing. I think with the big issue with Maito and his attack potency and his speed in regards to his direct scaling to a end of Shibuya Yuji, a multiple Black Flash Yuji, is the fact that Toto's there. And Toto's confirmed to be weaker than both. Yet even when Mahito's like on guard, prepared to fight Toto, all of that, Toto's still able to kick him around, knock him around a whole bunch. And while Toto definitely should be physically stronger than Choso, probably, maybe... I don't think the gap is so bad. Like, he mentions the speed gap here, but I also think this the general stat gap isn't so bad that Choso just would be a non-factor in a close quarters combat scenario. And especially considering, like he said, since Choso knows Mahito, if Mahito gets up close, Flowing Red Scale stack is coming out. And a Rage and Flowing Red Scale stack Choso, I could... I could definitely see him holding his own with this weakened Mahito, this 40% beat Mahito. At least me. I don't know. I could, I could see a hypothetical vision. But I get why Flame would go with this kind of route. Because if Choso just sold Mahito, then what's the point of the rest of the characters being there? Right? So, like, the moment Choso starts to give him back foot, because Mahito's adapting to him, he's getting used to his fighting style, knowing how to adapt to it bit by bit, piece by piece. He's destroying blood spears. He's dodging them. He's throwing out transfigured humans in fancy ways. A certain best of friendo is gonna come out and save his new brother. Or a brother from another mother may come out and well actually kinda same? See like technically Hmm Choso's dad is Yuji's mom. Right? I guess. Kinda. Cause now that you think about it, not really. Because the blood of Norotoshi combo, aka Big Jaku, was infused in Shoso. Not necessarily any of, but I guess that still is biogenetic information. So I guess technically, technically, that's way to think about though. Yeah, legally speaking, like that's not that's not really dad though. <laughs> that's not really that's not like the comparison isn't one to one. It's not linear, huh? I didn't think about it that way. What is it? Let's see constantly keep making blood weapons in order to keep Maito at a range. Furthermore, he will be able to reinforce some parts of his body with blood and cover them with blood just in case Maito even tries to get close. So Maito will have to really try his best to even hope to try and touch Choso. 
as Malito this time manages to avoid the piercing blood. Now for Yuji, it was a 50-50 chance whether he could dodge the piercing blood or not. However, Mahito should scale relative to, if not a bit faster than that Yuji, so he should be capable of dodging the piercing blood, albeit very difficultly. However, the moment he does that, a supernova is going to be launched out and exploded on him near immediately, which is also going to end up doing some damage to Mahito's soul. So Choso is already doing pretty good at keeping Malito at a range so far and actually keeping him there, while also being able to damage him with his several soul attacking maneuvers. Because every single attack from- I ain't gonna cut it too much here, because Flame is spitting right now. He's on a roll. He's hit, on, he's hit a couple black flashes already. But one thing I do want to mention, it gets infinitely worse if you use Anime Choso. I think at the time this was recorded and released, Anime Choso wasn't a thing yet. But like, if you use the anime extension to the Kenjaku versus Choso fight, this gets even worse. Like, the amount of blood that Choso produces and is able to use as effectively as he is. Yeah. Mahito. He's, he's never touching Choso. Let's see. Choso will directly damage the soul. However, before Choso can control a supernova to come back to him, he sees something very, very interesting as he hears a clap noises and sees Yuji has swapped places with the supernova after the supernova had finished exploding, and Yuji land a direct black flash on Maito right after. However, Choso doesn't have much time to focus on it as he very quickly hears Toto right after call him to fire a piercing blood at himself, and Choso immediately picked up on what had just happened that Toto was the one who swapped their places, as Choso immediately fires a piercing blood right at Toto, and right at the last moment, Toto claps again, swapping places with Malito, making Malito take a third piercing blood directly to the face. Now they had a massive, massive advantage. In the original canon, Toto's only real way to actually do damage against Mahito was through Yuji. While he had other things he could swap places with, Yuji was the only thing that could damage Mahito. Now, they're going to have several blood orbs and blood-based weaponry that they can swap places with that they can use in order to hurt Mahito directly because Choso is also capable of harming the soul. Now this is a big thing. In this scenario, Mahito immediately goes for the point two second domain. There's no stalling, there's no extensive fight. If he really ate a black flash and a piercing blood combo, he's gonna go for the point two second domain. I'm I'm gonna this that's I think that has to come up next. That has to. Because at this point, Mahito isn't stupid. He know he he knows he could not run the 3v1. I I don't think Mahito's that arrogant. And like in unlike in the canon timeline, he can't just send off one transfigured human. Because it would get washed by whoever. If he sends it off to get rid of Toto, he still needs to take care of Choso and Yuji, both who can harm his soul. If he takes care of Choso, then Toto's still there and still facilitating Yuji. So we're basically just back to canon. And if he gets rid of Yuji, then Toto's still there facilitating Choso. So like, no matter what, none of these pieces can be removed without Mahito still being in extreme danger, even if he whips out the polymorphic soul isomer. So I think he's gonna, he has to immediately resort to point two second. Let's see. And then again, that's where it gets crazy. Because if Choso loses a hand here, that's no piercing blood. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Remember, he's not immune to that. So there's no more piercing blood. He'd have to rely just on supernovas. And that'd be a pretty hefty nerf. So it could get devious. But at the same time, you could just have Choso and Toto start. Well, not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Not that kind of best of friends. But like, they could just start clapping each other. That's not. Clapping each other's hands clapping each other's hands and then things would get devious from there because Maito would just essentially have to deal with Yuji who's consistently swapping places let's see uh. furthermore it also won't be long until Toto lands his own black flash adding even more pressure to this I think Toto would land his own black flash even earlier because he's going to be left behind by everybody with Choso's ability existing there to be able to hurt Mahito and being much more useful in the battle because of how much versatility it offers. Yuji and Mahito both already landing their own black flashes, so Toto wouldn't want to feel left behind landing his own black flash, which is also going to put Mahito at even worse soul HP. In the original timeline, when Mahito tried the 0.2 second domain, he was at less than 40% of his soul HP because of all the damage he had taken from Yuji up to this point, as well as Nobara. But now it's going to be even lower than that because he's going to have to deal with the fact that Choso had done so much damage to him. 
as I have gone over, he is going to have taken a lot of hits directly from Choso by this point, especially with Toto knowing to swap places more often with Choso's blood manipulation attacks and Yuji rather than just Yuji and random rocks. Furthermore, whenever Mayuto does try and use several idle transferred humans, Choso is immediately going to use slicing exorcism to cut up the transfigured humans and not even let Mahito start to even try using that. Now this is the point where we get to the 0.2 second domain expansion. And in this situation, I see one of three scenarios actually happening and they're all kinda really insane. Scenario 1, Mahito is way too exhausted to even cast the 0.2 second domain expansion by this point. He has taken way too much damage, so yeah, he's kinda about to just fail to cast his domain because of how exhausted he is, which is going to lead to several attacks landing on him, likely another Black Flash from Yuji at this point, as well as a Piercing Blood at the same time, while Toto is still going to cast his simple domain nonetheless. With Mayuto being extremely injured by the end of all of these attacks, and at the last final moment, Yuji landing one final Black Flash to finish off Mahito once and for all. That's by far and away the most boring timeline, so let's get into timeline number two. That timeline could actually, it could be interesting. It, does Kenjaku make it in time? Does that final black flash from a Yuji who isn't completely annihilated, who has two people fighting with him, does that black flash plus piercing blood, if that exercises Mahito, there's no culling games. That could be big. That could be, that could be, if he actually can't cast it, that could be massive. But let's see, what are the other two? Ew. Timeline number two assumes Mahito actually manages to cast the 0.2 second domain expansion, and this is where things get really, really interesting. Mahito is at currently a much, much weaker point of his soul HP, so there is a pretty good chance Toto is going to be able to cast his simple domain and actually be able to resist for long enough. Either that or he will still end up cutting off his hand. However, the interesting part of this comes in Choso and whether Choso will be able to resist idle transfiguration or not. Cause by what we know, Choso does not have simple domain. Now there is a chance Choso has access to domain amplification cause he was also sent alongside Hanami and Jogo in order to fight Gojo, but I'm not going to make that assumption that he does. I also don't think he does. And here's the thing, I think it's confirmed either in a volume statement or a data book statement domain amp only works against simple domain or like simple attacks of domains right like complex ones like self-embodiment of perfection and limited void cannot be resisted by domain amp at least i don't think so i don't think so once again feel free to correct me on that but yeah choso he, he's in danger he wouldn't be able to defend himself at all he just he would legit just be a it victim because he shouldn't have the resistance because he doesn't have sukuna that's a big thing. So that's what I'm interested to see. Let's see how you take it, Flame. However, what I will say is this. I don't think Choso would instantly die from this either. Choso has more than enough curse energy and an awareness of the soul. Plus, it is a 0.2 second domain. If it was the full potency domain, I think he would end up dying. However, we do know that Mahito's soul touches really depends on his soul HP heavily, and as I was trying to make clear, Mahito has a much weaker soul HP, so while this would definitely do damage to Choso and Choso would need to heal from it, it wouldn't really kill him. So the best case scenario I see for Mahito... Once again, it depends on what Mahito gets. If he gets, like, Choso's big toe, for example, let's say his soul HP is that low and he gets, like, something as insignificant as that, well, yeah, yeah, then, like, it doesn't matter. Like, okay, whatever. But if he does get a hand off of Choso or a leg off of Choso, Choso can't heal that. His soul is just shaped like that now. He can't fix that. It would have to be, like, banged into shape later by someone else if that's possible. We don't even know if that's possible. We don't know if Yuji can, like, alter the shape of the soul now in a similar way to Mahito, but, like, with his fists currently in the manga. So, depending on what Choso loses, it could drastically nerf him. If it's something, if it's just one finger, or like two fingers, or like half of his hand, maybe he can still be somewhat effective with like this instead of this. But I think th there's still big ramifications that could happen depending on what he loses since he has no defense and he shouldn't be immune to it like Yuji is because he doesn't have Sukuna. Could be interesting. Let's see. So is this ends up in a very very similar situation to canon where Yuji ends up beating him anyway with the help of Toto and Shoso maybe? But the worst case scenario for Mahito is he just dies soon after in a similar scenario to scenario 1. 
And then there's Scenario Furie, which is what I see being the most likely. Some of Choso's spare blood that is already near Mahito, because there's going to be spare blood all around the battlefield, is already going to hurt Mahito and interrupt the domain from being casted, which is going to lead back to Scenario 1, where he gets bombarded with hits and dies. Either that or Big Brain Man ends up fighting all three of them at once and stealing Mahito in the process away. Now, this is already a massively better time. That's the that's the big thing. I, I was wondering if he was going to mention him. Big Jaku. Big Jaku was the determining factor of this timeline. If he shows up, nothing changes. He still gets Mahito, Culling Games still happen. But if they exercise Mahito too quickly before Big Jaku shows up, then Big Jaku can't start Culling Games. And that's huge. That's massive. Notably, Hana's implied to have incarnated well before the Killing Games started, so they could likely still hunt her down after they go to Tengen and like try to free Gojo. So Hana, not entirely impossible to save. Or get Gojo out. And then with no suit gonna yeah, Kenny's absolutely indubitably insanely cooked. Because he, he would have to go actively awaken Yorozu himself. Otherwise it would be Samuki still. So Samuki could actually be saved in this timeline. So, yeah. It depends on if Maito gets exercised or not, and if Kenny interferes soon enough or not. Very, very big. Because I would see Scenario 3 being the most likely, where there's some spare blood around, and Choso ends up triggering that, completely interrupting Mahito's domain from even being casted. So, Toto ends up keeping his hand in this timeline, and he still has the Black Flash amp he gets after nonetheless. So Toto is going to still be a viable combatant and able to help them and help them after this battle and help them with what is coming next, as well as Choso now being on their side earlier as well. And all of them just being together, like the new happy brother family that they actually are going to end up being. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into manga spoilers on the manga timeline purely because I don't want to give manga spoilers for this video. I purely wanted to focus on how he would end up changing the fight See? itself. But yeah, that's about everything. I want to see what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out. All right. I'll let that play out after I wrap this bad boy up. A WWW video. Flame tackled it in ways I wasn't expecting. Put it in a timeline way I wasn't expecting. Bro, battle conditions I wasn't expecting. Because that's why Flame is... Goated. The video is absolutely worthy. What do you guys think, though? Do you guys think this video is worthy? Do you agree with Flame's timeline, his interpretations? Do you think Maito could even be harmed by those plebeians, by those creatures such as Choso? Do you think his soul is laid bare? Please let me know all that and more in the comment section down below. Once again, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, make sure you go check out Eternal Flame's channel. It'll be linked in the description down below. Go run up the video, go tell Pencil sent you, and get excited. However, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave brother blood <laughs> leave brother blood in the comment section down below and to thank you so much for watching please remember to leave a like share comment and subscribe make sure that little case bell so you don't miss out on every other second of the channel also also i do have a patient down below where you support me for as little as one can one all month you can things like exclusive videos early content and more you also to become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more some of those perks include the live reaction to the very next chapter of jutsu kaisen and free variations of all my videos and if you become a 25 dollar patron or a 25 dollar member you can order whatever video you want and if you want to make a one-time donation or a one-time video request, the link to my Ko-Fi will be in the description down below. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a w wonderful day. This is Agla the Pencil, writing off. I would like to give a thank you to all three dollar members. So Connor plays Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Eternal Flame, Quarenti Atala, Red Wolf 4765, G Prosper, and Paris Arnold. And I'd like to give a thank you to our five dollar patrons, Steron, Sean, Midnight Lord 21, Marcus, Kevin, and Igneal. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our seven dollar members, Autumn Mornings Lazo, and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our $10 member, Robbie Uchiha. And I'd like to give a gargantuan thank you to our $10 patrons, Panda Goat, Joaquin, Joaquin, and iDemoKami. And I'd like to give a giga gargantuan scrumdily thank you to our $25 patron, ChinaDoll09. And I'd like to give another giga gargantuan gargantuan I have no idea what that word was. Thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.